And we've said that if we had the 8-bit word 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, that's obviously going to represent our first step, or 19.5 millivolts. Our second step, so if, you know, if our signal was 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you know, 2, binary word 2, that's, that's your second step. This step right here is, is, is this point on our scale. You know, that, that represents two increments of 19.5 on our scale. So here's the first one, you know. So right there, that represents 19.5 volts. A and we're going up one more because this is zero. Z this point represents 0, 0, 0, 0. This point represents 0, 0, 0, 1. And, and this step right here we're saying represent is represented by this value, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. That's 2. Um, so 19.5 and then another 19.5 increment gives us, so this, this would equal a, a value of 39 millivolts. So on and so forth. <coughs> so let's look at, um, let's look at the binary word, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, 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 right? So um, we know that this in binary is equal to 256. We've been dealing with this all along in base 10. Um, if you need to review this, you can go back to a previous video. I think Khan Academy, you can Google it. But th this represents 256 in base 10. I, I don't have time to go through that right now. Um, <coughs> so. Now, now, if we had this binary word, you know, well, let's go back real quick. So we'll take this example. What did we do here to get our 39 millivolts? Other than, you know, analyzing this graphically and saying, oh yeah, it's just two steps up. It's two quantized steps, two of 19.5 millivolts each, which gave us 39.5 volts. How did we get here? So what we did is we took this binary representation and we, we simply multiplied this times our VLSB. Here's our VLSB. You know, it's our smallest step, our quantized steps are 19.5. It's easy, right? So that was simply 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1 in base 2 times V L S B and for this case we convert this back to hex which was simply 2 right times our V L S B our V L S B is 19.5 millivolts which equals 39 millivolts simple so now let's say we want to convert this number. This is our word, our digital word. Um, what we're going to do is we'll take that digital word, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, just like we did here, you know, and this is, this is base 2, and multiply it again by our VLSB. So in this case, we have this, as we said, it's 256. So 256. We have 256 19.5 millivolts. Surprise, surprise, we're going to round up. It's 5 volts. You know, grab a calculator, check it if you want to. And, uh, I mean, I didn't. I just know it's going to work. Or it's going to be very close to 5 volts. You know, it's going to be like 4.99 something volts. And that's close enough. Um, so we've just developed a, v a formula that we can always apply to convert from digital to analog. And, uh, you know, this we kind of did this. I, I wanted to start off by going from analog to digital first. But I, I realized going through this that it was just it's easier to do what we just did, which is going from digital to analog. So let's come up with a formula here. 
So to go from digital, let me find a good color here. So digital. to analog. This is how we're going to do it. It's simply going to be our our binary word. I should really, hold on. I don't like that. Uh, we use pink because I'm a man. Real men use pink. We're going to take our binary word. times our VLSB, right? And uh, so then we're going to call that V, v out, because in this case, V in, this is our V in, right? We call it our V in. Um, now this is a great formula. So as long as you know your binary word that you want to convert and your LSB that's very important you can get your V out in terms of an analog signal again remember there's a little bit of quantization over here so it's not going to be perfect as we saw up here you know it comes out very very close that should be something like that um, this is the actual it's 4.992 I believe so you know, there's a little bit of quantization error that comes from rounding. That's just going to happen. To reduce quantization error, you increase your bit depth. You know, the, the higher, if, if you had more than 8 bits of information, you'd be able to record a more accurate signal right here. If this was 16, you'd get closer to 5. Um, and that really just comes from Calc 2, if you remember your power series. You know, so if we have a power, what's the power series? It's uh, so let's we're going from one here to infinity of one over two to the n, right? The the more terms that you add in here, the closer you're going to get to to one, right? So that's this part one. Okay, so um, okay, let's. Uh, I just introduced this power series here, and uh, that was probably it. It doesn't exactly relate. Let me show you how you, we can use this power series here to do the same thing that we've just done. So real quick, a review of the power series. All right, so um, well, let me choose a new color. Say that we have a series and we have eight bits, right? So our in our case, eight bits. N equals eight. And we're going to use this power series here. So, but we're not going to there. We're going from n, we're going from n equals one up to n equals eight. So we're taking the first eight terms of this series. So we have one over two to the one, plus one over two to the second, plus one over two cubed, plus dot dot dot, and we're going all the way up to one over two to the eighth, right? Um, now, now here in, in this power series, if you go back to Calc 2, we've said that this, you know, this approach is one. The limit, uh, limit, as n goes to infinity of this junk equals one. It approaches one. It never really quite gets to one, but the further out you go, the closer to one you're going to get. So right here, if, if you actually do this summation, which I'm going to do now, so just please bear with me for one second. Um, 